Hi, this is Kai Cheng Tom, and you're watching Ask Kai Quick Tips for the Apocalypse, a series of short videos in which I'll be answering all your questions about how to survive and thrive in the middle of the end of the world. One thing before we get started today, so those of you who are regular watchers of Ask Kai Quick Tips for the Apocalypse are probably used to seeing me in my bedroom slash living room slash kitchen slash living space um, with like my stuffed animals behind me. They are not here today because I am not there today. I am outdoors. We are trying something new. I've got two very masked, very PPE safe colleagues here doing the recording today and we are in like a beautiful park that's also kind of weird in the middle of my neighborhood. You might hear some irregularities in sound because they're building condos. Who doesn't need more condos in Toronto? So please bear with us. So this week's question is, I just had a breakup before the pandemic hit North America and now I'm really struggling with feelings of loneliness and like everything I would normally do to take care of myself isn't possible because I can't go out, I can't see friends, I can't get an amazing new haircut. What do I do? How do I make myself feel better about living alone in the middle of a pandemic? So I just want to say this is a really hard question and I'm just also going to say like I don't have an amazing answer to it because every time someone asks me how do I deal with a breakup I'm like I don't know like it's kind of got to be up to you babe. Here's the thing breakups suck. They're always going to suck. They're going to suck, you know, at the end of the world. They're going to suck after the end of the world. They're going to suck when we hopefully live in like a paradise dimension that's separate from this one after we've transcended the material universe. Like it's just, it's going to suck. And so what I would say to you is everything you have available to you, I would let yourself do as much as feels healthy. So something that I really love to do that doesn't require going outdoors when I've had a breakup is like wallow, you know, like serious wallowing. You want to like lie in bed and talk to no one and like cry about how difficult life and love are. You do that. This is the perfect time. No one will judge you. Everyone is doing it anyway because we're like, oh, it's the end of the world. If you want to like eat your favorite junk foods and binge watch your favorite TV show or like your least favorite TV show, you know, I would say do all those things too. Caveat, of course, is like healthy moderation. Don't do anything that is going to increase a sense of like body dysphoria or self-loathing. You know, give yourself as much wallowing time as feels humanly appropriate. Because guess what? You're allowed to feel bad. It is terrible losing someone that you love to a breakup or losing someone you love in any case. And you just get to feel that. I would also say, you know, all the usual things um, that would apply outside of the pandemic do apply in the sense of you can do them online, some of them, right? So you could talk to a counselor online, you can hang out with your friends online. There, you know, there are things that you can sort of do that will sort of approximate being surrounded by loved ones, even though you aren't really. I guess the last thing I recommend is that there are things that you could do that might be spiritual or ritualistic or just uh, things that kind of give you closure. And I would recommend these things regardless if we were in a pandemic actually, but um, maybe especially now because we are in a position of having to give ourselves so much uh, spiritual and material and um, psychological closure on our own these days. One of the terrible things about a breakup is that it's a form of grief. And in the dominant, mainstream, kind of oppressive society we live in, that grief isn't really given a body to hold itself in. So we don't, you know, have a funeral for a relationship that's ended, even though it often feels like something inside us has died. We don't have, um, you know, words that we say. Or sometimes we can't even get the person who's broken up with us to say why they broke up with us or, um, you know, what we could have done differently. So you have to kind of be able to give closure to yourself. Um, and something that really helps with that is doing a ritual. Something that helps um, where you are psychologically catch up to where uh, the external world is. Uh, that doesn't come from me. That comes from a spiritual teacher and death doula named Sarah Kerr. I encourage you to look up her stuff. I mean, so one thing I've done in the past, for example, is I've written down every single thing that um, exes of mine have done that I uh, want to forget about or that um, hurt me. And I've written them all down on slips of paper, cut them up into little bits, and then set them on fire. 
Uh, if you're going to set things on fire, do it in a fire safe way, please. I cannot be held liable for you burning your homes down. But things like that, right? Um, lighting a candle and imagining your former partner sitting in front of you and saying everything it is that you needed to say. Writing down all the questions that uh, you have for your uh, ex-partner and um, then writing down some answers that you could imagine being the possible answers to them. Anything that gives you a sense of like, yeah, this relationship meant something. The ending is painful and I need to find a way to move on. Even things like giving yourself a haircut, like now is also the perfect time to experiment with giving yourself bangs, you know, if you're like brave. Um, again, if you're gonna cut your own hair, please do it in a safe way. I cannot be held liable for any injuries or bad haircuts. But yes, you know, the, the answer to this is, isn't clear. It, it, it's mostly just about giving yourself space, giving yourself time, and then permitting yourself to give yourself closure. So that's it for today, folks. This has been Ask Kai, Quick Tips for the Apocalypse. Thanks so much for watching. Wash your hands, wear masks, stay safe. And if it comes to you that you just like want to cast a magical spell and curse the moon, like I'm told the young ones are doing these days, like maybe don't do that. We need the moon. Shit's already bad. Don't curse the moon.